Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd Ayyala habita fillah Continue on in our study of advice for the student of knowledge by Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al-Wasabi Hafadhallahu ta'ala Picking up where we left off which is the fifth point and the for a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters, Hafidhukum Allah, may Allah preserve you all, uh, is first that we have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking knowledge. The second thing is patience to Allah Azza wa Jal, patience on the path of knowledge. And the third is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ittaqullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fourth is being persistent and continuous in seeking knowledge and those are not necessarily in that order but these are all general advices that the student of knowledge should possess for success in seeking knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen in order that they may improve their practice and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah bless us all with tawfiq the shaykh said I advise you with being humble before Allah and leaving off arrogance so after mentioning taqwa and being persistent in talib al-ilm, the shaykh mentioned to be humble before Allah and leaving off arrogance. And the, and the reason being that how can a person benefit themselves and take knowledge if they're not humble? Because often what you find, you, you find some people that have harman, that they are prohibited from benefiting from knowledge and benefiting from the ulama even if they had the opportunity to do some study because they were not humble and they were arrogant likewise this doesn't just apply just sitting with the ulama but it applies to any time someone is sharing knowledge with you whether they be at your level or have more knowledge than you or be less than you in knowledge that if they're sharing something that's of benefit uh, because فذكر فإن ذكر تنفع المؤمنين that we should take heed because verily the reminder benefits the believer and so this is a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, take, to take heed and be reminded and accept that reminders, uh, the reminder accept the reminder from whoever reminds you, if they call you to the haq and you've made a mistake in something, then correct yourself. And so it's very important to be humble before Allah and leave off arrogance if you want your heart and your mind ready and in a state ready to accept knowledge. Allah the Most Glorified and Almighty says, I will turn away from my communications those who are unjustly proud in the earth. And if they see every sign, they will not believe in it. And if they see the way of rectitude, then do not take it for a way. And if they see the way of error, they take it for a way. This is because they rejected our communications and were heedless of them. This is what arrogance leads you to, to rejecting the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his ayat, kawniya wa shari'iyya. And the ayat, kawniya wa shari'iyya, habita fillah, al kawniya referring to those signs within the creation that are signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us dalil, gives us evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and He is the only one worthy of worship. For example, what you see before you, these are real pictures of places I've been and I've taken these pictures in my journeys. And is that not beautiful? And if you were to be in those places and smell the beautiful smells, those natural smells that I smell from the fresh air, from the trees, from the pollen, from all, all the uh, beauty of, the, of the, the nature. Those are all signs that you can only say, Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah who created this and allowed for me to have the opportunity to enjoy uh, these beautiful uh, places and environments, to reflect, to ponder, uh, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my duties and my shortcomings 
my duties to Allah, and my shortcomings before my Lord in the many sins that we commit. And may Allah help us and forgive us of our sins, I mean. So we should not ever be arrogant towards the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other ayat, ayat that we want to mention is the ayah or the ayat shari'ya. And this refers to the Quran, basically. Those, those ayat, the verses of the Quran. So we want to read the Quran. We want to understand the Quran and we want to ponder upon the Quran and practice the Quran to the best of our ability. And it was reported that Mujahid, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala said, knowledge is not attained by shyness nor being arrogant. So we shouldn't be shy in seeking knowledge and in asking questions. Although sometimes we can't help it, we feel when we're in the presence of Ahla Elm, especially, I feel myself shyness. Sometimes I feel nervousness around the scholars, and this is just my nature. So everyone is different how they, they uh, react, but do not be shy in asking so that way you can benefit yourself, especially if it's something pertinent to your practice. If it's a, a question that's not beneficial and that's something that is truly uh, not something that is knowledge that you really need, or something that's urgent and you feel that it's going to be a burden upon the sheikh or whoever you're, you're trying to communicate with about knowledge, then this is something else. But in general, you don't want to be shy uh, with about, uh, when seeking knowledge. And as Mujahid said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, one of the tabi'een, I believe uh, tabi'een, he said, knowledge is not, gain, uh, is not attained by shyness, nor being arrogant. So also arrogance also will repel you. And he was one of the Mufassireen from the Tabi'een. And the next point the Sheikh mentioned, he said, and this is pertinent to what we were saying, is thanking the scholars that you benefited from and supplicating for them, seeking mercy for them. So this is absolutely imperative. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all of our ulama, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and majma'een up until now, those who pass before us and those who remain with us. May Allah bless them all. Uh, those that are living with ikhlas with thabat and for them to continue on and teach us and benefit us and leave beneficial knowledge behind and beneficial students to continue in their, on the path of knowledge, in the path of ilm, in the path of fiqh in the path of understanding and coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us all and may Allah bless all of our ulama and our students of knowledge and those people who call us the khair. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. So the Shaykh said, thanking the scholars that you benefited from and supplicating for them, seeking mercy for them. That this is also his advice. And then he said, Abu Dawood related in his sunan, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the one who does not thank the people does not thank Allah so being thankful to those who shared with you beneficial knowledge uh, especially from the ulama and others who put forth the effort and sacrifice to share what they have uh, and when you seek knowledge with the, the ulama you 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 do appreciate that because when you sit with the scholars, even when you read books and if they have explanations, it's not like sitting with the scholars. The benefits and the fawaid that you will gain from the ulama is immense and it's so vast. And ulama, they have different darajat, they have different levels of knowledge and different level of fadl. Some are ulama, you know, rabbaniyun you know, in their practice and in their way of teaching and in their knowledge and their wisdom. And some are less than that. They are, they are on different levels. And when you sit with an alam or you sit with any uh, of the ulama, you will see and find the benefit from their teaching and from their manners and how they encourage their students to be on the Saratullahi Mustaqim. That this is the duty and the wadifa of the ulama, and you'll see that they're teaching and given the tarbiyah that we need, meaning that they're, they're raising us in, in, in essence, as if you're raising children. They are raising us in knowledge on how to practice, how to be better Muslims, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and come closer to Him, subhana, 
So this is uh, something to be thankful and grateful to because you can gain immense benefit from the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. And may Allah bless us all with ilm al nafi ruskan tayyib wa amal al-mutaqabilin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.